St. Vincent's latest album closes with that punch to the gut song where she uses the imagery of finding severed crossed fingers in the rubble there. And while that line isn't entirely her own, it's uh, actually a partially a line from a Laurie Moore short story, it adds another appearance of fingers in St. Vincent's lyrics. A few songs earlier, she makes reference to someone tracing their index on the Andes. She was crossing all her fingers and all my stars aligned. In Marrow, she was pretending there aren't ten strings tied to all ten of her fingers. In The Party, she says there aren't enough hands to point all the fingers. And on the David Byrne collaboration album, they sang about feeling it moving in their arms and fingers. Throw in another song where she notices her hands were black in a downtown taxi cab. Another one where she requests putting hands where we can see them, please. You start to see there's a whole lot of digital inspiration going on, which may maybe not be surprising given the amazing work St. Vincent does with those fingers on guitar alone, but also all the work the fingers do writing songs that capture strength, vulnerability, and little bits of hope. St. Vincent, a.k.a. Annie Clark, is in town for Blues Fest, which is with me now. Hello there. Hello. That was a very insightful intro. Oh, thanks. Had you always been interested in fingers and hands, or...? Well, I didn't realize I was overusing them in songs until you now. Say overused. No. You say overused. <laughs> no, not at all. But I mean, I do, you know, a lot of the genesis of things is, you know, you kind of the proverbial and literal staring of, at your own hands. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what have I done or what will I do? Um, so they hold a lot of, of promise and kinetic energy. So yeah, that was very insightful. Thank you for that. When you have that actual relationship with, and are kind of, shall we say, dependent on the fingers and the work they do, are there days that uh, they let you down or that you actually struggle with them? One of the great things about, uh, about having played guitar for as long as I've played guitar is that sometimes you're brain gets left behind by your physical form and you just kind of go with it and you, you surprise yourself you know you do things that you weren't intending to do especially live and in the moment and in reaction to the other musicians what was it about that line that interested you what was it about it that leapt out of you i just thought it was so heartbreakingly human um in the short story by laurie moore in a book called birds of america it's uh, a woman in in the story is reading a you know a news clipping or something about how uh someone f was searching through the rubble of a plane crash and found someone's severed hand and the fingers were crossed that just re it reminded me of uh you know things in my own life it's it's interesting because if you can that idea of, of when hope emerges when maybe it shouldn't or it, it seems almost impossible i was thinking about uh if you you compare it to um the, the idea of hope in human racing where you know i'm keeping hope alive how which which better describes uh saint vincent <laughs> during the during the average week you know what i don't remember that song oh i don't remember how to play it and I t kind of don't remember the words, and I'm really sorry. But I don't have my first record on my computer. It's on a lo long, dead laptop, and I, I haven't rebought it, so I don't know what it sounds like. I would love that if you had to download your, old, your first album on iTunes. I probably would, because I don't know how to do... I don't know how to, like, find music for free. <laughs> It's okay. I just, that's a good thing. Yeah, I yeah, I'm single-handedly keeping the music industry alive. I can't find my music. I mean, I don't know where I'm going to be able to I track know. it down. And there is something, there is something like, ah, oh, I don't really want to pay for it. <laughs> you know? I get it. I get it, people. I get it, Canada. With with old songs like that then, do you find there's just a time to let them go to sort of release them? No, I mean, I it's still a, a near and dear to my heart kind of thing, like looking at, you know, a high school yearbook photo where you go, oh, oof, right. what was I thinking <laughs> with that hair? Or like, oh, all right, you're all right, kid. It's interesting when you're talking about, you know, hunting down music and so on, because with, with the tune um, Digital Witness, you paint sort of a depressing vision of people being pretty caught up in themselves, looking in and then needing to overshare at the, at the same time. What interested you about that element of society um i'm so sorry i didn't hear your question because i was busy um <laughs> tweeting a selfie sorry what 
Uh, no, it's it's like a room with a lot of mirrors. Um, you know, we have all these signifiers. We say, oh, this I buy this. Um, you know, I buy this kind of phone, and this says something about the kind of person I am. And I like this band, and that says the, something about the kind of person I am, and mm -hmm. et cetera, and so on and so forth. And it's all very. Uh, it, there's a new medium in which to perform that kind of identity. Um, and so I just wondered if the, the, the tail wasn't wagging the dog a little bit um, and we become more obsessed with documenting identity and experience as a po at the expense of uh, actually having experience, uh -huh. being in the moment. Do you find yourself doing it? All the time. All the time I am. I'm, I'm, I'm completely, t especially, you know, traveling as much as I do, you know, it's the, t t my phone is my lifeline to my friends and family. So I'm always, you know, checking in. And so I'm totally right there in it. I, it, it's, it's not an indictment of modern sure. life. It's, I'm very much a fish swimming in the same sea as everyone else. You mentioned the tail wagging the dog. So before I go, I did want to ask you about the dog imagery that that you use in Bring Me Your Love. I thought you were like a dog in the, there's the line where you say the dogs will bark, so let them bark. You, there was a line from um, Not Now where you talk about I'm not your mother's favorite dog. Is there some reason the dog imagery leaps to the surface? I mean, on the recent album, I was writing it in Austin in the back shed of my friend's house and she had a couple dogs. So there was literally a dog kind of around. So, I mean, in the same way that sometimes I don't look very far to, for, you know, inspiration and imagery, uh, sometimes not even further than my own hands, I, I was like, oh yeah, dog. I'll use them in a song. Yeah. <laughs> same answer, thank you so much. Thank you.